this is The Crime Cafe, your podcasting source of great crime, suspense, and thriller writing. I'm your host, Debbie Mack. Before I bring on my guest, I'll just remind you that The Crime Cafe has two ebooks for sale the nine book box set and the short story anthology. You can find the buy links for both on my website, debbiemack.com. D E B B I M A C K. Dot com under the Crime Cafe link. You can also get a free copy of either book if you become a Patreon supporter. You'll get that and much more if you support the podcast on Patreon, along with our eternal gratitude for doing so. It's my pleasure today to have on an author with more than 100 published works, including short stories, novels, and novellas. She uh, works in a variety of genres, including crime fiction, of course, and she's a USA Today bestselling author. She is also owner of Shadow Publishing, amongst her other accomplishments. So it's my great pleasure to introduce Kay Ann Meinel. Thanks for being here today, Kay Ann. Thank you for having me. It's, it's uh, my pleasure to have you on. I'm glad you're able to be here. So um, you've written an impressive number of works. How long have you written and published fiction? I've written all my life, but I've actually only published about eight years. Um, but I had books waiting. I wrote my very first complete novel in 2003, and I did it in two weeks. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. <laughs> Was uh, that your completed draft or did you have to um amend? Oh, I tweet I played with it for 8 years before I actually sought out publishers, got 20 rejection letters and something told me to go with self-publishing, which has worked for me. That's excellent. And, yeah. I, and I did get uh, once I published it, I did get approached by a publisher. And I should have read more of the reviews because they turned out to be con artists. I've never received any residuals. Oh my gosh. They stole it. And then I had, I got my rights back and from, you know, using my lawyers and um, they've never stopped publishing it. They keep stealing. Oh my gosh. That's awful. Yeah. It was a horrible experience. That's why, you know, I caution people yeah, anybody can call themselves a publisher, but watch what they do. Right, absolutely. And self-publishing, you have your own imprint. I also have my own imprint, and I think that's very important. Oh, yeah, because a, a lot of uh, self-published authors, if they don't have a so-called uh, publisher behind them, some stores won't even consider them. Yes, exactly. Exactly right. Uh, it gives you a more professional image it does it does and i i've compared my paperback books to some of the so-called professional books um some people that i may compete with or whatever and i'm very pleased with what we've produced and and it was a learning curve you know i didn't walk into this knowing anything but uh, i really enjoy learning that it's a, it's a challenge. I absolutely love formatting my books once the story is written and, you know, tweaking all the little fine details, like putting in a doodad here that most people wouldn't notice, but when you're looking at a paperback and it feels different accordingly, and you don't know why it's because of those details. Yes. Yeah. I, uh, I'm also, I'm, I really like self-publishing and um, the flexibility that it gives you. And well, they're trying to make it a little harder. I notice with like create space going away because Amazon is, you know, bringing it back under their umbrella mm-hmm. and it's no longer going to be a separate company. I, I had my first experience with Amazon's uh, print and wow, did they make me jump through hoops that were unnecessary? Well, you can't do this. You can't do that. And I'm like, funny, you published it already. And I'd done that. 
now you say I can't do that because I found an error that I wanted corrected because I'm real particular about that. And uh, it took about five or six tries to get it published again. That's bizarre. Yeah, I've had no trouble with Ingram Spark myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that there too, there's a learning curve. Mm -hmm. And um, in fact, that was one of my goals this year is to switch not only my, all of my books, but my author's books over to Ingram Spark, just because of the broader range that it'll give us. Absolutely. I, I myself would uh, recommend Ingram Spark any day over any other publishing platform in terms of print. Uh, that's just my, my feeling about it. I've been with Ingram Spark since, since before there was an Ingram Spark, back when there was Lightning Source. Yes, and yes. I was publishing my, when I decided to go completely self published, um, I used Light, Lightning Source and never looked back. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm covered. <laughs> well, you, you also get into uh, a creative, comfortable feeling, you know, like I was used to create space. And yes, I, I balked at do, using Kindle's platform, but Kindle is the biggest dog in the yard. So you got to deal with them. Oh, I'm not and, arguing with that, yeah. No, but but as a result, because they already owned Create Space and now they're bringing it back in, all their little hiccups are costing some of us time, effort, et cetera. Well, it's interesting because one of the arguments I've always heard for using Create Space is that you'll get your books, print books up on Amazon faster. Theoretically. Theoretically, well, that may be true because right now my print book, which I just came out with, is only available through Barnes and Noble and uh, IndieBound online. Well, you Even can't though. discount Barnes and Noble. They're still out there. They're oh, still yeah. hustling. They're still fighting, and I hope they win because you know Amazon has killed the stores. And I mean, I've seen strip malls that are absolutely empty because you can't have mop and pops anymore when you have an Amazon. I mean, my, my, I, I, I know myself, my first thought is, well, let's go see what it is on Amazon. I know. Well, it's the go-to place for a lot of people. And one of the things I like about um, Kobo is that it reaches certain international markets that Amazon does not oddly enough. Yes, yes. I like that I have, um, I have my books out on 18 different distributors mm -hmm. because uh, there are countries that don't allow Amazon. Interesting. And I, and I like the fact that my books are available. We still can't get into South, um, uh, not South America, South Africa. South Africa blocks a lot of books. Fascinating. It, well, it's interesting. When you find out that from a fan, they're like, I can't get your book, but I really want it. And fortunately, I made it so that all my books are available on my website. And that makes a big mm -hmm. difference in what they can download. Because I have another uh, fan who only orders from my website because she's having trouble getting it in Australia of all places. Wow. I had yeah. no idea. Amazon. Yeah. yeah. Amazon doesn't isn't capitalizing in in Australia like I personally believe they should. And Kobo certainly does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, well let's talk about your series, uh, the Malice series. <laughs> you have a long string of novellas in this series. Um, what inspired you to write about a lesbian serial killer? <laughs> 90 to 95 percent of all serial killers are male and from all the research i've done the remaining five or ten percent that are female are either i, I don't want to say women are smarter but they're less they're less likely to be perceived as a killer they're able to fake it better i think i think women can be more devious. If you look in some of the different cultures, women were always nastier. 
There, I mean, it, it, in for instance, in the American Indian culture, um, if somebody had to run the gauntlet, the women were always the ones that were more bloodthirsty, more willing to um, kill. Hmm. And, and, and nastier. That's just one example. I mean, that's throughout history. But when when I came up with this series, I loved Dexter, and oh. I didn't want to I didn't want to copy him at all, because I don't do that. But I, I I thought, gosh, can I write a murder mystery? Well, it was an experiment. It was only supposed to be five books. Number twenty five should be out in the spring. Um, but this fascinating character resulted and what I have Alice in my head and what she's like and what my fans perceive her is absolutely fascinating to me because she's this petite little blonde and yet I get this gamut of descriptions of her that I just kind of go that's not what I wrote <laughs> yeah, okay <laughs> If that's how you want to see her, go for it. But she's she's highly complex, and it don't it doesn't come out in one book. And, and yeah, and as you read her, you you you're thinking, okay, well, most serial killers are loners. Um, and because I cater to a lesbian market, it always surprises me how many straight hetero male followers I have to that series. In fact, one of my followers, I killed him off in the third book because he was, he's being a smart aleck on social media. I said, well, guess what? You're going to die. And he loved it. He absolutely <laughs> loved it. Um, he has bragging rights. And, <laughs> but you, you don't think about women being serial killers. And the beauty of it is I've already thought up at least three or four um, sequels to that will veer off from Malice about her daughter. Fascinating. So, yeah, that it could, it could be genetic, you know, could run in the family. Because I've introduced so many elements of, first of all, how, how her children were conceived um because there is the technology out there and i've read up on it that you don't need a man mm -hmm. and you know we we've used that and things that could happen as a result and um we we've delved into um the sex trade we've delved into the russian mafia um alice just she won't go away. I kind of wish sometimes she would because <laughs> I, it, it, I did take 18 months off and just release two more of hers. And I had people weekly asking me when you can come out with another malice. So, I mean, it, it's great to hear that, but you know, I write other things too, you know? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, what, what do you think is the, story engine if you will that keeps this thing going for so long she's a kick-ass woman who doesn't take any guff um revenge can be a motivating factor but she she tempers that by thinking it through and she thinks the things you don't think of and th those little twists and i i leave a lot of the books the novellas on cliffhangers i was gonna which, say yeah yeah, it, it annoys and it yet it intrigues people. I've I've gotten some semi nasty letters saying, Would you please, you know, <laughs> come out with another one because I gotta know what's gonna happen. And I've gotten some closure at some point, would you? <laughs> you would think. I thought I thought I had her gone about book thirteen. And nope. Then her wife came in, you know, her wife became more of a prominent figure. And it, wow. I found it I found it interesting because then you have the different viewpoints and I wrote the different viewpoints. And a lot of times you don't have the luxury to do that when you write. And I did because these are novellas. I mean, these books are only 40,000 words, max. 
Um, some of them are even less than that, and they're priced accordingly. But none of these books are are more than three or four bucks. So you know, for two or three hours pleasure, you've got a story that just keeps giving. Mm -hmm. And I've 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 got outlines for at least three more books now. Wow, in my spare time. <laughs> of course. Yes. Um, that sounds like it would be perfect for a series. Yes, I've, I've thought about the adaptation, but I, my fear is that people will be like, oh, this is just like Dexter, but mm -hmm. she's not like Dexter at all. Well, that's and that, okay. that, that thrilled me that I've been told, no, it's not like Dexter, because I worried, because of course it influenced me. I've read the books, I've watched the series, but I'm very careful to stay away from that storyline or, you know, how how that wonderful author created their story because I'm not about plagiarism play ah, I can't even say the word now plagiarism <laughs> even unintentionally you know because everything influences you of course but um, I mean a, you know a book a book I read I was probably about eight or nine years old I found myself influenced by that when I was writing one of my stories and it I was like why does this sound familiar <laughs> and then I figured it out but you know, that was 40 years ago, you know. Well, everything does influence you, even if you're not copying. And there are only so many ideas. So feel, take some comfort from that. Um, let's see. Oh, I wanted to ask you, um, what do most books, movies, and or TV shows get right or get wrong about LGBT issues and characters? that we're not just like everybody else. I mean, we have, we have the same arguments. We have the same feelings, emotions, problems, you know. Um, what saddens me, especially about 20 years ago, it was worse, way worse, where if they had an LGB character, they, they had to kill them off. They could never have their happily ever after. Hmm. And fortunately, especially in um, LGBT fiction now, you've got so many people who want that happily ever after, and they write it. Um, not all the happily ever afters are what the fans want, and they've got to realize that's reality then, you know, that's, that's more real fiction. And you have your highs and lows. I mean, just because... Uh, a lesbian sleeps with another woman doesn't mean that they don't fight over money, over uh, trips, or uh, who's going to do the dishes. That happens in a hetero couple, too. Mm -hmm. And it, it amazes me the ignorance that is still out there about that. Um, I just happen to write wonderful stories with lesbian characters. Um, and I do write good stories, and I'm not saying that because I'm conceited, but I mean, the amount of five-star reviews I get tell me that I've got something going right here. I'm doing something right. They, the fans like what I'm doing, and the amount of fan mail I get that tells me they want to see a sequel or they want to see more of the Malice series tells me I've hit something that they love, and I, I'm tentatively thinking of another series calling it bloodthirsty lesbians because some of the things that alice does it is appealing to the bloodthirsty lesbians that i i joke about that but it it's really quite true because she's really a violent character My but gosh. you love her wow. she's an anti-hero i love, and I love those yeah, but people don't expect that, especially, you know, you've got a petite blonde and, you know, she, she, she doesn't appear to be what a serial killer would be. You know, you, you think of those serial killers in history and there, there was a famous lesbian one who they put to death in Florida. Um, she had been abused. She became a hooker and she started killing people. And that that movie with Charlize Theron freaked me out major. I cannot 
every time I see the, the makeup from that movie and how that story developed, it freaks me out. And if I'm freaked out and I can write something like that and freak other people out and they love it, hey, great. <laughs> Well, that's excellent. And um, it sounds like you're keeping very busy. So you write other stuff in addition to your Malice series? Yes, I write a lot of drama, uh, romance. I, I don't do as much romance as I would like. That was what I pretty much started with. Um, but even my romance stories have a lot of drama in them to get to the happily ever after. And even then, it's not always a happily ever after. Um, I just like a good story, something you can sink your teeth in and relate to. That's good. That's awesome. It's awesome that you have such uh, devoted fans, too. Um, let's see. I'm very impressed that you started the Lesvik Bard Awards, starting yes, that a whole series of awards. It sounds like uh, that must have been successful since you're starting another the uh, Gay Scribe Awards this year? Yes, yes. We started the Lesvik Bard Awards a year ago in December. And anybody who published a book in 2018 can enter. And that goes until December 31st at 12 midnight Central Standard Time. And at first there was resistance because I wanted to remain anonymous. That was my mistake. Um, I can't enter my own awards. That's the ironic thing. Um, but I had heard for years complaints from other um, authors who said, oh, it's unfair, the same people win all the time, it's rigged, and I'd seen some things that said, yeah, some of that is rigged, or some of it is biased towards this, or biased towards that. And I was like, well, why don't they do it anonymously? You don't know who the author is, you don't know who the um, publisher is, you don't know the book name. And it fell on deaf ears. Nobody was listening. And I got fed up. And so I started researching it. And I did a lot of, I did six months of pretty intense research and drove my editor nuts. I drove my girlfriend nuts and my friends who were helping me with it and who were going to run it for me. And when I had everything set up, to where I literally got the website up within a matter of two days. And, you know, we've tweaked it since. But like I said, I wanted to stay anonymous. Well, that didn't go over well. And, and I understand why, you know, you're sending money to somebody who's anonymous, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and due diligence, the, the lesbian community really ripped into it. Unfortunately, the people I had posting got the brunt of it. They, they were like exposed as um, uh, fakes and they, they weren't, they were just doing a job I had hired them for to post about it. And so I came out within the same day. I, I did a blog on several platforms, explained who I was, what I was doing. I mean, I'm pretty well known in that community anyway. So it was kind of like, oh, okay. And I explained why I had wanted to stay anonymous. And I expl also explained, I can't enter my own awards. My lawyers took a look at all of the paperwork and they said, no, you can't enter. And I was like, well, that kind of sucks. But the point is to get more people aware of these books. These books deserve recognition. And that's what we, that was the goal. We've got this beautiful crystal award and I bought a sample and, you know, it's on the website and everything. And then I had a lot of people saying, you know, oh, well, not a lot, but I had quite a few people saying, well, what about guys writing lesbian fiction? Are you going to allow them to? And I'm like, if it's lesbian fiction, that's the point. I don't care who writes it. You can't exclude somebody because of their, their sex. That's like saying, I can't write straight fiction because I'm a lesbian. Right, or I can't write you know. about men because I'm a woman. Right, well, amazingly, I was surprised to find how many women write gay fiction and enjoy it. They mm -hmm. enjoy reading it, they enjoy writing. And I was like, well, that's, you know, those are our brothers in arms, as it were. Why not give them more of 
I mean, I'm not the only award site out there. I understand that. And I'm not arrogant enough to think that, you know, we're going to beat them all. No, it's, it's about getting, getting the word out there that these books deserve the recognition. These authors can enter and get a fair judging process. I think and that's wonderful. I'm hoping it, it really does well. We did well for our first year. So I'm hoping next year will be even better because, you know, it's, it's, the premise is really good. Well, I just want to congratulate you on that. And I think that's absolutely fantastic that you that you did that and that you keep doing, do, doing that and promoting literature. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? Uh, just that I do have a publishing house too. Uh, what had happened was when I when I started, people kept asking me how I did things, and rather than give away free advice, I started. Uh, well, an author actually convinced me to take him on as an uh, a lesbic author, and it started from there. And you know, we grew to several dozen authors and we published for them. That's fantastic that you're publishing others as well. Congratulations. In my spare time. <laughs> All that spare time you have. Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to thank you so much, Kay Ann, for uh, being here today. Thanks for being on. It was a pleasure. Well, thank you for having me. Oh, it was my pleasure. And um, I will just say, don't forget, everyone, that the Crime Cafe box set and anthology are both on sale through most retailers, and you can find it on my website under Crime Cafe. That's debbiemack.com and click on Crime Cafe, where you'll also find our Patreon page. You can get a free copy of both of my, both of the Crime Cafe eBooks if you support support us through patreon uh and <clears throat> and if you enjoy the podcast please do leave us a review on itunes or stitcher because it helps us a lot and so with that i'll just say happy reading until next time and i'll see you in two weeks on our next episode we'll have crime author and police psychologist ellen kirschman see you next time